Excellent, excellent. Um, thanks to everyone who was just uh, listening to the 11 a.m. Eastern panel, Reimagining Education, um, a fascinating conversation. Um, and for those of you who are just tuning in, welcome to the Social Vision Conferences. Um, we're thinking about the future and ways that ancient wisdom, new wisdom, any wisdom can inform um, what might be coming next. Because I think we all know that something is fading and something is coming. At least that's my impression. Um, I also want to say a special hello to those people who were with me yesterday during the incarceration panel. That was an adventure and uh, nice to see you again. And I also want to um, say one more personal note. I'm over I'm over extending myself as the moderator, but I have to say one other thing for this panel that um, growing up um, with my father, Philip Wexler, who is the primary author of the book, it was an interesting experience. He was a professor at the University of Rochester and as a kid, I didn't quite understand why there were all these people from all over the world always hanging out in our house. Um, but it seemed to happen often and sometimes they were living there. Um, and that was cool too. <laughs> um, I was told to pretty much stay out of their room or at least knock, but anyway. Um, and two of Philip's favorite people and two of my favorite people on a personal level were Catherine, Casey, and Hein Zunker. Hi, Catherine. Um, and so it has a sort of special personal meaning for me a little bit, this one. Um, so it's great to see you. Catherine is on the beach and Heinz is in the library. Um, so without further ado, a quick introduction. The panel is called Paths to Utopia, Social Vision and Economic Questions, which I have a feeling will um, evolve or devolve into the meaning of, of life like most of panels do, and that's okay. Wherever it goes, it'll be cool. Uh, brief bios for our um, esteemed panelists. Catherine Casey, Dr. Catherine Casey, is a sociologist and professor of organization and society at, oh boy, I'm gonna mangle this, Loughborough University, um, United Kingdom. Her research addresses questions in socioeconomics, organizational analysis, and democratic governance. I have my papers. And our other panelist, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to this conversation, is um, Dr. Heinz Zunker, who um, joined the University of Wuppertal, Germany in 1991 as a professor of social pedagogy and social policy. In, 19, uh, 19, in 2016, he was awarded the title of Rudolf Carnap Senior Professor. His research excuse me, reflects an expertise in topics including critical theory, uh, the theory and history of social work, sociology of education. He's published multiple books on social theory, Nazi Germany and pedagogy, and he serves as the chief editor for a leading German language journal on sociological research. And um, perhaps uh, each uh, panelists will say a few words and then we can get into a conversation. We may have some questions. Um, at Catherine, maybe we'll start with you if that's okay. Um, oh, thank you. You're welcome. And so Paths to Utopia, that sounds like a path um, I'd be willing to go down. So uh, on that note. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for your introduction. It's lovely to see you. Really, it is. It's wonderful actually to be here. Um, given my university conventions, I've prepared a little talk. So it's not quite exactly a conversation. I mean, probably Heinz has two, it's, the, it's a conventional thing to do. So in fact, I've even scurried around this afternoon, my time uh, and made some slides. Again, a convention that we, we're supposed to do. So I just do it these days. Um, and great, I think great. there's only a few of us present, but I will still share the slides. Is that okay with everyone? Yep. Absolutely. Okay, well, it'll take me just one second while I do that. And most of our panels have, um, um, the panelists have said a few words before any sort of dialogue, so you're right on beam. I see, okay, well, um, 
so I've even, yeah, this is the title. I was thinking about this. Uh, I, I mentioned something to Heinz uh, perhaps a few weeks ago, and he thought this would fit in well with what he was uh, also pursuing. So um, in truth, a paper with this title needs much more elaboration than I've done, but I've sketched out some things that I think would be useful for at least some of us to chat about. Um, it's a way of engaging with the, with the uh, with the social vision project, but it's perhaps um, you know more conventionally sociological in one sense. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. But nonetheless, I've prepared a few slides because that's that's what we do these days. Um, yes, so I will start straight off then with you. Michael knows this so well, of course, as a co-author of the book, and others will know this too. But I'm just going to restate it. One of the central aims of the of Social Vision Project, the book, was to argue that sociologists should consider religion as a contemporary intellectual foundation for social analysis. Now, Philip, as probably most of us here, are fully aware of the difficulty of persuading academic sociologists to agree with that. In fact, um, quite the converse would be the typical response. Um, but I'm a disposed hey. interlocutor. You'll see the formality of my words there with, uh, with Phillips, with Wexler's and team social vision. So my comments are offered in that sense. Yeah, so a kind of um, nuanced sense there in my expression. So I'm going to talk about um, some aspects of the, of the project, and I'm going to especially focus on two sociologists, Amitai Itzioni, as well as Philip Wexler. They are, sorry, I'm just seeing things flashing across my screen. Is that a message from you, Michael? No? Okay. Yes, they're taking up, how they took up this, they're more famous, well, perhaps um, famous to many of us, certainly to Philip and to Amitai Itzioni, famous predecessor, Martin Buber, and his theorizations uh, and utopian socialism and the ways in which these more contemporary sociologists have engaged with that and social creativity and moral society. So Martin Buber, as I said, famous um, for a few generations, he proposed an intersubjective theorization of social creativity and society. Now, clearly there's a lot more to say about that intersubjective theorization. And I have to sort of bracket that uh, somewhat, uh, in fact, actually quite a lot. But um, what's significant, uh, one of the things that is significant about that is that Buber was early on this turn of thinking that has really only become more prominent in sociology and other social sciences since actually Jürgen Habermas's great intervention in the late 20th century. So it's more conversational these days, but by no means is it mainstream. And Heinz is likely to agree with me on that point. So I might return to a word about that later. But Buber's I and Thou and Paths in Utopia were very influential in the English language debates. But Buber also published widely on Hasidism and that is not my expertise, of course, and I have no, um, uh, no temerity to comment on that, but just to note the importance of his, the breadth of his social and religious philosophy and the, the immense regard Buber has been held in diverse circles of, of intellectual uh, debate and religious debate and so forth. So in other words, I'm underscoring the highest regard for Martin Buber's contribution. So among the many things Buber talked about, wrote about and theorized extensively, the economic question remained central to his social and religious theory. Itzioni, Amitai Itzioni, who was Buber's student at Hebrew University, um, made the rest of his career in the United States, someone in organizational science, organizational sociology and other social sciences, but especially prominent, I can go on about Amatai Etzioni differently perhaps, but a very important theorist, highly regarded theorist and founder of um, a stream of moral socioeconomics. So clearly Buber's lineage to Buber, uh, Etzioni's lineage with Buber has been more um, more visible. But Wexler, no less, was greatly influenced by, by Martin Buber. 
um, and he has taken up some of that theorization in his own particular way. One could think of him as a contemporary interpreter, perhaps, of Buber, but again, a point I might return to. Buber, through his reading of Chabad Hasidism, proposes a transformative paradigm for the world. As you can see, very ambitious, um, utopian um, proposition there. But he does so apparently without reference to the economic sphere, the economic dimension of social activity. Someone like me can't help but notice those things. The, the authors may well think it's embedded in the book, but from my vantage point, it's a, a curious omission that raises questions, or that someone like me raises questions of. Paths in Utopia, originated at a time when there were hot debates on socialism. I mean, there are still some degree of that, but not perhaps as widespread in the academy and the university sphere as, uh, as they were then. Buber's aim was to engage with the Marxist theorists and engage he did, and they engaged likewise with him. He envisaged a transformed social order, a life-giving collaboration, shaping life from within. And he theorized extensively around that small quote I've just inc included. The Marxists dismissed that vision from Engels and, and Marx onward. They found that a utopian socialism, indeed for Engels at its worst, bourgeois socialism. Again, I can, Heinz might wish to comment upon that, but the point is these were hot debates and there were, as always, competitions among who were the most uh, progressive visionaries and so forth. I'll leave that aside for the moment. But back to Buber and his emphasis on the intersubjective orientation, the I and thou. He proposed a renewal of society through the renewal of its cell tissue. His expression, all of the words here in quotations are from Buber himself. These days, sociologically speaking, we use expressions He proposed community, understood as life in common, as the genesis of social creativity. Now, Buber was influenced by a few others who were thinking along these lines. Importantly, Georges Zimmel, who had theorized very early and um, has his own story in regard to how his ideas were taken up. But he rejected the, the the understanding of the of individual as the unit of analysis and the, the cogito, the, the Cartesian framework. Again, I'm bracketing that somewhat. We could talk about that if we if we wished. If, if we, yeah. But so Buber's further contribution in that sort of theorization, because he did um, adopt some of Buber's um, premises quite directly, but Buber theorized and recognized a religious experience in common life as central to the human experience, to the social experience. He discerned the center of community as being an unusual word for us these days, transpicuous to the light of something divine. Oh, excuse me. My slides are not progressing here. Uh -huh. Yes, he theorized that, no, sorry. Just to pause for momentarily there. There's a lot more to say about Buber. So that sketch just sets up a, a, a small framework from which to position Etzioni and then Wexler. Just a very few words about Etzioni because I'm sure time is passing quickly. Etzioni took up Buber's I and thou paradigm to postulate an, an I and we paradigm at the center of his socioeconomics. He theorized how creative movement following Buber's thesis on create, social creativity could transform into institutional structures. And the consolidation of those institutional structures in turn enables further dynamics of cultural and social creativity. So both Etzioni and Buber favored and, and theorized a, a theory of social movement. Now Etzioni was breaking 
he was in, in um, keeping with Buber, but he was breaking from the prevailing tradition in sociology at the time. Another story, but just to sketch it, the, the paradigmatic influence in sociology from which Etzioni broke was the, the, the Parsonian structural functionalist theory, which pervaded sociology at, at, for, for decades. So Etzioni's break with that was significant, but he did so through this proposition around I and we paradigm and the moral socioeconomics. More to say about him at another time. But he proposed that social creativity occurs across all spheres of life and within micro and macro structures. Again, he was therefore breaking with the prevailing tension around macro structures and micro structures and the um, the disputes about who, which determines which typically of course for the Marxists and those others influenced by that macro social structures determining micro social life. This more interactive and creative proposition from Etzioni um, proposed that action, social action entails the possibility of a moral social economy and that was capable of overcoming alienation through participatory democratic co-management. Buber thought the same, most definitely, but Etzioni theorized it into a contemporary capitalism and as a point of difference to the, both the, the more revolutionary models and of course the structural functionalist models and also in difference to the turn of postmodern influences around this time. Once again, I'm going to say more to say about that, but now to move on, Rather quickly, you can see I've covered these. Um, the, the, the line of thought I'm wanting to underscore is the connection between this um, unique theorization of the religious dimension of intersubjectivity at the heart of social community from Buber's theorization. So Wexler's intervention here, he didn't, he, in, in the, um, the last book, um, Social Vision does not invoke Buber directly, but I'm familiar with Philip's earlier work, which um, has most definitely expressed this dialogical inter interaction with Buber's social and religious philosophy. Wechsler shares, shares Buber's intersubjectivity and theory of creativity. And he shares too, profoundly, the orientation to the religious transcendental experience as fundamental to human experience. He unequivocally and this is stated many a time in the book, unequivocally finds in, in Chabad Hasidism a mystical social vision of what the self and society can be. It's a transformative phenomenological power, extends to all areas of human endeavor. You can see the connection between the utopian view um, from, uh, from Buber and also his pre predecessors in Hasidism. For Wexler, when the world is transformed by love, each of its inhabitants is empowered to excel in independent unison. Now, of course, that is a, a breathtaking proposition, and it's an old one. It is familiar in human culture to make um, um, aspir aspirations of that nature for the organization of our communities and our societies transformed by love. No argument with that, of course, few of us would have. However, and this is only in keeping with where I started today, this is a however as an interlocutor. Buber's social and religious philosophy that shared exactly those same things, except that his sense of community guarded against emotional and affective, um, or even in his words, sentimental aspirations to be careful about seeing communities as communities of affective uh, love, neighborliness and so forth. More words to say about that later. But importantly for my talk today is the um, Buber's emphasis, his utopian socialism, no less than the Marxists, held an essential concern for the economic question. In Buber's words, the status of the worker, the subordinated worker, and the status of the accumulation of private wealth to the advantage of individuals and their families 
and not to the social mix of community near and far. For Buba, society was made up of plural communities, all with their centralized, their internal centers of participatory governance. So the questions that must be asked when one brings up the economic question, how are tendencies toward oligarchy and patriarchy to be regulated in, the, in, in Wexler's vision? Question that must be considered here. Yeah. I propose that of the grand utopian vision that Wexler interprets of Chabad Hasidism, the deep and perpetual economic questions must be asked out loud, overtly, explicitly. And some, there is very much to welcome in this wonderful book and its grand endeavor, the richly insightful interpre interpretation of Shneshim's Chabad vision. But for me, this one sociologist, the silence of the economic question calls for, in Bulgarian language this time, which language that familiar, that Philip would be enormously familiar, of course, Bulgarian sparks, a little more talk here of a radical I and thou and we. Thank you, that's my, that's my talk. Thank you, Catherine, that's, um, that was interesting and uh, Philip's upstairs and I'm sure he's shaking his head. Probably yes. Um, okay, uh, we'll come back around to that more in conversation. I have questions, but let's hold for a beat on that and um, let that percolate and uh, see what uh, Dr. Zunker has to say without um, uh, too much moderation. So Heinz. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Catherine, and um, hello, and thanks again to the organizers that uh, I have uh, the second time the chance after the exciting debate with Tali uh, in the autumn, now in the beginning of the new year, and um, uh, I distributed in the afternoon this short paper after a long paper half a year ago, but I will only very shortly come to that because I think uh, Catherine brought the questions to the fore, which we can discuss uh, together uh, with the reference to the social vision uh, leitmotifs. And I like the uh, social creativity because that's of course uh, a chance to talk about the German contact, uh, concept of Bildung, education in this, uh, meaning of uh, human self-realization and social realization both and i think that's a relevant point but let me start <clears throat> with two points because i want to ch challenge uh, philip implicitly like the last time um, and it's connected to uh, what catherine uh, just uh, said for the first point i use adorno uh, one of my favorite and one of phil's favorite uh, authors and scholars, and uh, uh, I put uh, down the question, can there be a concept of messianism in a secularized and materialistic meaning slash sense? I don't know if there's a difference between the two words, that's my problem with English all the time, but the funny thing was I had the chance because I had to escape another Zoom meeting to hear to listen to the last minutes in the talk between Jotam uh, Hotam and uh, Peter McLaren. And uh, they ended up with a question on the relationship between theology and politics in this very crazy discussion on QAnon and fundamentalism in the US and the alternatives. And I think uh, this can be connected to that. And I come to, these, to this question in a, using two very short quotes from Adorno, the one is the last sentence of the negative dialectics. And I think that's a serious question uh, connected to that. Adorno says, there is solidarity between such thinking as in the negative dialectics and metaphysics at the time of its fall. And uh, because Michael said, okay, frankly, Frank und Frei in the German way, that's a challenge. Uh, for the social vision authors. Fortunately, I quoted another thing, the last sentences of Minima Moralia, written by Adorno 
in a time of despair in another way. And he says, the only philosophy which would still be accountable in the face of despair would be the attempt to consider all things as they would be important from the standpoint of redemption. And I like the term redemption, I must say, and this term, uh, I think, uh, in the conversation with Catherine should be used in her interpretation of Buber and Etzioni and of Wexler. And the second thing is to bring social reality in. And it's funny that the Marxist German uh, brings in idealistic uh, positions is a quotation from Bowles and Gintis, I think still one of the best studies on democracy and capitalism, better democracy against capitalism. And they say democracy and capitalism don't fit together because capitalism and they have clear criteria uh, is a danger for liberty and uh, personal accountability and social accountability and the power question. And they say we have to eliminate, virtually, uh, eliminating the central institutions of capitalist economy. And there my question is, how do we have to deal with the central institution of capitalism that is ownership of the means of production and mediated rights? Because as we know, law is uh, invented to secure the ownership. So um, having this in mind, I would like to uh, say a very few sentences to Catherine and asking her or commenting and asking. Um, I think uh, Buba in his early works uh, from the early 1920s, Ich und Du, um, has to be located in the discourse of that time and that was dominated by Ernst Bloch's The Spirit of Utopia. And uh, uh, therefore, and on the one side and on the other side by Lukács with his theory of the novel and the central sentence of the theory novel of Lukács was his uh, saying, we have we suffer a transcendental homelessness, transcendentaler Obdachlosigkeit. And so we have lost our religious hopes, our religious securities, and we won't get them back after the German idealism destroyed uh, religion and said, God is death. It's not Nietzsche, it's Kant, Hegel, who said that implicitly. And how? what do we get uh, instead of religion. And I think that's a challenge until or by today because it's not answered from the theology or from the fraction in sociology dealing with uh, uh, theology or religion. The second thing is it's interesting I and thou uh, to read it against the Hegelian analysis of the bourgeois society or of the civil society where Hegel says in the paragraph 182, unfortunately in a paper I'm just writing, I quoted that uh, in the German type, but I had, had the English here. The civil society is constituted by individuals who follow selfish ends. And that's the problem with all this talk about community because we have to talk about the structure of society. I don't believe in communities, to be very clear, uh, because in the German context, Gemeinschaft is a very, very dangerous term. And I have worked a lot on the Nazi basic ideology of folk community. So I think we have to deal with society and we have to analyze which structures are relevant here. Uh, certainly in this context, um, it's interesting that Buba and Etzioni both have to refer to the talk about the divine. The divine is the answer to Lukács' diagnosis uh, of the transcendental homelessness, but we don't experience the divine because what we experience in modern times very clearly is that we are alone, that we are only the humans, and that there is no God who can save us. That's the experience of modernity. That's the experience of a secularized society. And it's very interesting 
uh, that people like Buba and Ezioni uh, try to bring in this talk about the divine. And therefore, I like Adorno when he uses a category of redemption. So what can redemption mean? Uh, fourthly, um, I think it's indeed relevant to emphasize that society only functions with a reasonable economy. And that's the point of Bowles and Gintis. And I like the term of socioeconomics from Ezioni. The problem with Ezioni is, by the way, that he ends up as a communitarian and that are very dangerous people because uh, they are very authoritarian, they are conservative, and they believe in communities as communities of shared values, norms, and so forth. And that's a very German conservative approach. And I remember that uh, I debated with Ezioni 25 years ago when he gave a lecture in Cologne. And, he, and I said, what is the consequences for the truth question of your communitarianism? I said, uh, especially against the experiences he escaped as a young Jewish boy from Cologne with his parents before the Nazis. So truth is not what all people say or all people who belong to a community. Truth is different. Uh, so therefore, I'm very skeptical. But I like his socioeconomic thing. And the question is, uh, how can we, how can we, yeah, work? Uh, with societal possibilities that the capitalist structures of economy can be overcome. Because as long as you have the capitalist structures, we end up with what you ended up with. We have the oligarchic uh, structures in politics and economy and economy. It's called monopoly capitalism. So um, I think um, the difference and I would say the right assessment of Buber is utopian socialism. The difference between Buber and Marx, uh, even when Buber asked about the status of the worker, Marx analyzed capitalism based on an analysis of the capital as a social relationship. And uh, Buber uh, has a humanitarian approach dealing with humans, especially with the question of I and thou as a question of the otherhood, who is the other? But that's a theological question. It's a question of the New Testament, of the Jesus movement, who is your next, who is your neighbor? And the question is, how can you structure these questions? Therefore, my first question, it's an old uh, work plan by Philip and me since 20 years. Can we conceptualize messianism in a secularized and met, uh, materialistic uh, way. Thank you. Excellent. A lot to think about. Um, and a great question to close with. That's exactly where we might be right now. Um, Catherine, I wanted to give you a chance to uh, respond to uh, some of that if you'd like. Uh, Heinz uh, certainly, uh, you know, had a few remarks uh, in your direction. Um, okay, I'll say a few words. Work, working backwards, sure. Heinz, I think we disagree. Ruba's interpretation was, I think you have, we have, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say that's a misunderstanding of Ruba there, Heinz, sorry. It was not, it is not a dualistic sense. You know, you have this whole theory of the intersubjective relationship. It is not a, a, the other, it is, it is, a communal relationship. It's a much more sophisticated and subtle theorization, and it is a socio-religious one. But there is, yeah, there's much more to say about that. But I'm going to pick up your other point about Etzioni and communitarianism. I'm puzzled that you can think that of Etzioni and not think that of Wexler's interpretation of Chabad. It is manifestly communitarian. And also the contemporary debates around communitarianism are much more subtle and diverse than the, the old German Gemeinschaft notion. Not that that's not valid and has historical reasons for higher, so, as you said, dangerous and fears about that. But there's far more um, nuances in that debate. Uh, so it's many of the people within that uh, don't wear that label, like Charles Taylor, for instance, some people call that philosopher a communitarian. He doesn't wear that label at all. 
they are more in this stream of social philosophy that was not mainstream and Zimmel is likely to be one of the people we would call a profound founder of that and it was Zimmel's conceptualizations that rejected the Cartesian framework what became the prevailing understanding of Western philosophy of the individual center yeah which is where the whole liberal capitalism got stuck which is what we're up against so the changes that you're proposing at the end which you know I agree with you as much uh, profoundly in terms of how we can um, alter profoundly the, the, the congealed institutions of advanced capitalism. But the alternative has to include a dismantling of the liberal hegemony, the concept of the isolated individual as the unit of history. The link with, with um, Buba, Etzioni, Wexler, Chabad, and also, but even earlier, Hasidism. Again, as I said earlier, it's not my expertise, but reading Buber and tracing back some of that, this more contemporary debate around intersubjectivity is recognizing more of that flow. I'm thinking now here also, Heinz, of someone whom you might read also, Axel Honneth. You're familiar with Ox Axel Honneth? And you're on mute. Yeah, Heinz, so I have to unmute if you can. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a strong critic of Honneth. I, I think he's <laughs> fully wrong. I hate him because he doesn't understand critical theory. It's horrible with him. Oh, we're in disagreement there. Oh, we're in disagreement. We need a bottle of whiskey, and fortunately, differently to his father, Michael will join in. Oh, well, I don't, I, well, in you, uh, no, I quite disagree. I mean, I, I, will, I will give you the papers. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what of, what of Honneth are you reading? Honneth's revisitation of reification, for instance, do you dismiss that outrightly as well? Yeah, yeah. One you of do. my friends wrote Gosh. a review with the title, uh, Reification Light. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's We're all gonna... about the recognition stuff and then about his criticism of Adorno and Horkheimer. Uh, well, I think he's right. Another. I think he's right. He's on to it regarding recognition. And he's drawing on a on a suppressed discourse, yeah, the whole more more critical social psychology dimensions and, and psychoanalytic thought to inform this. He's moving, you're right, he's moved somewhat from critical theory into more philosophical anthropology. So he's drawing on that older tradition that didn't get much as much discussion in the Anglophone debates, but I think it's where things some debates are now heading. But Catherine, sorry, Michael Thompson has a nice book against Honet, The Domestification of Critical Theory. He's an American, but he studied in Germany. And uh, that's indeed the problem. Honet is a moralist, but not a political theorist and analyst. But that's a special discussion. I'm more interested in, in uh, the question how you solve or no, how you rescue the world. Which word? The world. The world. No, I'm yeah. going to come back to your dismissal of communalism and not seeing Chabad as a direct successor of those other communitarian efforts that you that you dismissed Etzioni for. Yeah, and yet Etzioni's had a had a had a material dimension to that, although some would also argue so did Buber. But they centralized this this divine um, transpicuousness within the center of community and. Chabad is not about society, it's about community. There's no, other than the micro-social dimension, which the book certainly draws out greatly, no question about that, it's a profound contribution, the micro-sociology -so of Chabad. But it is not a, a sociological, social, macro-social discussion. It's a, it's a utopian wish for a transformation based on that communitarian project. Should leave it at that before we get into. Uh, now, I, I, I would like to ask you that that's my that's my challenge to you. How would you overthrow capitalism and how would you uh, overthrow oligarchic rule like we experience it in the US, for example, independent if it is the one elite or the other elite fraction. Uh, but before that, I think uh, I, I would like to make my st point very clear. The dangers of communitarianism 
and you have that in the Shasidic movement, when you have the power of some people, uh, are the same dangers like in bourgeois societies. And that's the question of, of gender, of power, of generation. And I think as a critical Marxist, who was all times anti-authoritarian, I think the danger of communitarianism, and I know all the subtleties because I read the stuff and discussed with Walzer a long time, is uh, the power of values who are inculcated, implanted into people. Uh, that's the problem, the first problem. The second problem is, and there I refer to the critical Marxist movements questioning power structures, like in the early kibbutz movement, how do you have a rotation system in communities with respect to power structures? And by now we experience in all approaches uh, of revolutions that the ones who got the power take the power and go on with the power. And then the alternative to community is because that's a challenge. I fully agree with you. Is the Marxian talk of the association of the free individuals. We agree fully in the criticism of bourgeois individualism, which is the core of the neoliberal counter revolution. But the question is, how do we get the humans we need? And therefore, I like to mediate social theory with the critical theory of building. So the question is then where are the social sites for educational processes which end up as Adorno says in the production of the right consciousness. And that's, that's the challenge. Where do we have that in the contemporary societies? Not only since Trump, we had it all the times because capitalism is based on the appearance level um, and on unjust structures and so forth. So how can, how can you imagine a community, even in the Buba sense, where people uh, act with each other in a human way and not in this selfish ends way as Hegel describes it, uh, rightfully, I would say. Are you asking me or are you asking yeah. Chabad? Because uh, I want to take up that point once again. We're not, I'm not defending communitarianism. I'm def in your understanding of it, let me put it that way. It's surprising that you, 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 you speak of that so strongly and yet you didn't sort of use that word with the strength behind it in regard to your reading of social vision. Because that precisely in my, I mean, this is the delicacy because I don't want to get too far into this because it is such an important dimension of invoking the, the religious dimension in community life, which is their argument, presumably, for the regulation of those power structures. Doesn't look like that from the outside. Buber's effort toward that was these um, councils of participation, the whole participatory democracy and co-management uh, system. So that theorization extends to that. And of course, it's many discussions around that and the whole problem, gender problems, and all the other ones that got stuck and remain stuck, the questions that you have now been asking. asking. But one of the, I think the differences in the contemporary debates, not all of them, obviously, my little circle of, of, of debate, is that the word perhaps is no longer so much overthrowing with the, I mean, you might be using that in the, in the more, um, older understanding that without any sort of violence associated with that. It's not so much about, it's about creative renewal of finding the, 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 sort of the, the seeds or the sparks, and as Buber would have said, to find these ways in which we can um, generate and rebuild um, generative life-giving forms of relationship and that must, and there is some of this going on, but the area that, as you said, and we're in complete agreement, the area that is most concretized and has entrenched more under financialization is contemporary capitalism and all of its structures. We're in an enormous difficulty there. We almost have nothing to say other than trying to say, to, to scratch away at these alternative iterations. 
I'm interested in demolishing the liberal project more than reconstructing um, you know, an older or congealed model of socialism. A point of movement is to critique, deconstruct, and formulate an alternative to the, to the congealed liberalism that's, that, con that continues to dominate our thinking. And that's where I think there are conversations to be had around in socioeconomics, including your dislike for Axel Honneth and the few people who are gathering around him. I'm one of them, Heinz. <laughs> yeah, but he is wrong. <laughs> I, 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 I might have to step in here for I one moment. I think you are more enlightened. Then. <laughs> um, we could. Uh, this is a, a amazing intellectual. Um, I don't want to call it a battle <laughs> conversation, but can you see um, this? You probably can't. Sorry, because I've got. So, sorry, go Michael. Ahead. Can let's you see go. this? Let's let's keep it going. No. You can't see this. This is Axel Honneth. The I in the we. Yeah. You tell me he's wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> I don't know that. I know. I worry. I worry. <laughs> you won't like it because it's theory of recognition, but it's the I in the we. And, and he's not in the lineage of Buber, but it's wonderful for the, for the community of scholarship that we're talking about here. And I think to, to the, again, the great project that Michael and, and Philip are involved in has stimulated that, a widening of debate where we can mix our intellectual traditions and Honneth's exploration beyond the third generation critical theory. We should have a little session about this sometime. Next time when you are in Wuppertal, we have the chance. We have the, I have the wine cellar, as you know. <laughs> yes, uh, I'd like to uh, be the moderator again in, in the wine cellar, if that's possible. Um, when we have that session. Uh, this is a great conversation and uh, it's actually kind of a pleasure to hear you guys going back and forth. We have a limited time, so I did wanna jump in with, with one uh, question of my own and maybe one question from the Q&A from one of our uh, listeners slash viewers. Um, the question I wanted to pose because both of you have done some wonderful analysis here um, but um, the, the Catherine's presentation um, stopped at Wexler and the conversation revolved around a lot of interesting personalities, but I wanted to um, allow each of you to have your own card for a moment. And the panel is called Paths to or Paths in Utopia. And so I wanted to give Catherine first and then Heinz a chance to um, project or speculate. Um, I'm not going to demand that you be hopeful, but um, uh, speculate into um, the future um, in terms of your own views. We've heard about everybody else's views. I want to hear a little bit about your own views. Catherine. Thank you, Michael. That's a, that's a great, profound question. I almost hesitate to say a word about that, but I will say that I'm hopeful. You asked, perhaps uh, hesitated to use that word too, but I, um, I, I'm hopeful and perhaps even my invoking Buba and Etzioni in this little talk indicates this uh, passion for social creativity. We are social creative people. We can get beyond the, this, the selfishness that um, Heinz was talking about. These are permanent elements of the human condition, of course. But if we pursue these kinds of open, which again, your book has done, open thinking toward the religious dimension beyond its congealed or its um, conventional interpretation from the secular vantage point. Again, I think the same is true from Heinz. I would like, well, never mind about that. <laughs> no, so the sense about social creativity, um, an opening toward an expansion of consciousness, our own and our collective ones, whether that is achieved through the kinds of um, um, occasions that Chabad brings about and do, as do some other traditions, or whether we can also find that in other kinds of discussion. But some of the things we have to do toward that is to relinquish our hold on our attached 
um, ideologies and convictions and foster at least some more openness and tikkun, is that the right word? Some ways of repairing and restoring and getting over ourselves and thinking hard. And then I'm going to agree with Philip and you know, love will transform things. And it's not just a utopian fantasy, but it's something um, we have to actually have to, to work at sometimes. It's not just something we invoke with the good feeling states. So there's lots more to say, that'll do. I'm, I'm on the side of creativity and, uh, and, and uh, affective communication for political and social change. <laughs> Brand, thank you. Thank you for uh, venturing out there into the waves and, uh, and <laughs> Heinz, your thoughts on uh, yeah, anything you I'm, projecting I'm, into the future, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm an escaped Calvinist and um, uh, my challenge is to deal with this transcendental homelessness and I don't see the hope we need. I'm much more skeptical. I call myself an optimistic skeptic sometimes but only when I'm dealing uh, with childhood studies. Um, I think it's too late to uh, initiate the relevant processes of emancipatory transformations, which would mean a good life for everyone in this world. Capitalism in the form of private capitalism and in the form of state capitalism, as the pseudo-communist dictatorships call themselves, destroyed most of the possibilities and um, now with the oligarchic uh, ruling powers uh, us russia and china i don't see that europe is the island from where we can uh, save the world that's too late especially after the brits organized their brexit so um, i think the world is full of egotisms on the national level and on the individual levels, if you see how consumerist capitalism is uh, everywhere nowadays. And so I'm uh, more skeptical than I was 20 years ago when I hoped for building as a chance to overcome structures and actions and as a power to develop this association of free individuals. Well said. Um, I, I, let me quickly check the chat and the questions. I know we're running out of time. Um, okay, that's that. I, I think um, if uh, Jonah is ready, we're about out of time. Um, we have about only three or four minutes left, but I, I think that um, it's a great conversation. I, I hesitate to go any further than, than where we've left it right now. I do think that redemption, which was on the, the, the handout that Dr. Zunker sent out, um, is the word of the day. And can we reach it? Um, how are we gonna reach it? Um, this is, these are some of the questions we're asking. Um, big questions, and I want to thank both of you um, personally and professionally uh, for being on this panel, being on the conference. I want to also, um, again, uh, invite myself to the wine cellar conversation um, with the three of us. Uh, I'd be happy to moderate or, or say nothing. Um, okay, Jonah, if you're here, you can uh, you can hop back in, and, and I'll save you two minutes to... Uh, introduce our next uh, panel. Thanks, guys. Okay, thank you so much. Um, that was just such a fascinating conversation to sit here and listen to. I'm so happy we got you guys to, we found a time where we could all, all, could all meet and just eavesdrop in that conversation because it was amazing. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and thank you, Michael, for doing another great job moderating. Um, we will now move on to our next panel.